And so, the Beyond series, or whatever that's supposed to be, is complete. But I personally like to call this the gap year in Elite Dangerous' development. Thank the Naked Empire Smurf Whore Goddess that it's over. Now we can just hope and dream, and probably sacrifice some goats to the Lord Braven too, so that we get some proper development next year. Or is it this year? Ah, well, whatever. But for now, let's examine what we actually got from this thing. Well, back in 2017, in the first ever Frontier Org, organized convention uh, expo thing that yours truly did attend as well, the Beyond was announced. While Planet Coaster people were freaking out after seeing some sort of a bench. No, seriously, I shit you not. All Planet Coaster people were literally beside themselves in joy after seeing a fucking bench. The elite people want seeing the new things, well, at least myself, got rather skeptical and concerned, having more questions raised than answered. But okay. What really was Beyond supposed to be? Well, I'll let Lawrence, the game director, explain as he did in the very same expo back then. So we've got an amazing series of updates to talk about tonight for 2018. Mm -hmm. They're kind of built around three kind of principles or three areas. So there's the, the core game, which is a Foundations of Elite. It's kind of going to that and building on the Foundations of Elite. Then there's the narrative. So it's expanding the dynamic and engaging narratives that we've got in Elite. And finally, a series of new features that complement those two and build on those two. So, building upon the foundations, building narrative, and new stuff. Am I the only one who thinks that phrase building upon foundations can be the same as new stuff? Of course, many assumed that it was quality of life that was meant there, but in a retrospect, yeah, I'm not so sure. Still, in the first update, out of four total, engineering got changed from the Gamblatron 9000 to an actual progressive system, and when it came to rolling stats. The material gathering, on the other hand, was still much like pulling your own kidneys through your ass. Still, it was a positive change nonetheless. Then there was the crime and punishment changes that became just pure punishment and nothing else. See, SDC, a rather well-known player group at the time, made an absolutely wonderful suggestions for this, but seemingly got ignored just like everyone else, and now the game will send you at least 200 light years away if you get killed and have some sort of a fine on you. You know, the thing that you can get from bumping into a ship or so. Yep, that makes for such a good quality content, right? To put the sheer stupidity in the real-world context, it'd be like having cops send you to a fucking prison halfway across the fucking country for jaywalking. For fucking jaywalking! Simply, the system was designed by a chimp with a prosthetic brain and electrodes stuck up its ass, zapping the thing at random intervals, more frequent if the chimp was about to make a good decision. Though on the bright side of the update, the rocky planets you could land on changed, making them more vibrant and though at first Yamix was really just meh about it, I really grew to like it a lot. Seriously, as a cameraman I really enjoyed it. And yet the good things just couldn't continue for long. The PERSONAL got put in place too. Or as you may know it, the tech brokers. A literal grind wall being put in the game for... Uh, uh, I don't know what was the reason, but just remember that every weapon needs to be unlocked multiple times. Every size class, every firing mode has its own unlock requirement. While on the other hand, modules have only one unlock, as I assume seven unlocks for all the classes would be too much on the nose now, would it? To me, this is a great shame, because I love the look of every weapon, and some of them actually can be really useful too. But any positivity I I could muster is just siphoned out due to outrageous unlock requirements. In the second update, we got ships. Uh, you know what, in this season, total, we got six new ships. All of them are medium and two of them are multiroll. Rest are combat. I know, I asked for ships to fill up the empty space between 20 million and 80 million for the ship lineup, but could we get something other than the magpie attention grabbing combat ships? Maybe some small or even large ships? In the beyond, the ship releases have been okay for the most part, but the effort seems to gone into more copy pasting things, as three of them are almost that, but with changed wings and engines, while the two crates are literally just that. And Mamba is Ferdlands, but with stat sliders tweaked. What Yamix wants to see is a unique design. Let the artists go a little wild and make something unique. 
Which is why Mamba, frankly, in this regard does stand out a lot. I like it and it's so great to see something new. Which is why the three Guardian Fighters are my absolute favorite. While mostly useless, I simply love the look. Yes, they are modular, like the Alliance lineup, but they are modular in the way that common bits are less than 50% of the design. Besides, they are so weird and unique that I'm willing to screw up the script by repeating I love them. After that, we got some engineers in Colonia, which was a good thing in general. But then the Genosis jump to permit isolated space failed, <coughs> quote unquote, and was the biggest shit show since the offline mode, which was both disgusting and hilarious at the same time to witness. And then the last update of the year, the culmination of all the promises and first, no, you don't get the Ice Planet visual improvements that I actually personally almost got hyped about, and no, Fleet Carriers 2 are not coming. Uh, yet. The squadrons were massive disappointment, even before the update got released, and though yes, that horse squadron was the first one to get to 500 player limit, in just 6 days by the way, the history has shown that increasing the member size or allowing people to join multiple squadrons will not be a thing. If I'm wrong, I don't know, I'll do another 24 hour stream or uh, something. And eat that crow, cause those features would make squadrons awesome. As for scenarios, a bit of fleshing out is a nice thing for signal sources and missions or even events in the world. The BGS gets some good stuff, but Yemix is not really well versed in this matter, so ask your weird friends about this. Oh, and there was a rather notable change in color correction, gamma, contrast and brightness and few other little details in overall visuals that uh, feels amateurish to me and has produced more than enough migraines, even in my own Discord members. While I personally want to gouge out my eyes eyes when looking at some of the things the station internal looks. Those should not have been changed. I can't believe that I won't ever see the refinery stations as they used to be. Oh, and the asteroid rings are polluted too with some more fogs. That really feels like a downgrade to mask, well, this. Still, on the bright side, ha <laughs> ha, the codex and exploration have been absolutely wonderful, and let me repeat this again, the exploration and scientific gold rush is on. But even if you simply just like to explore in a space sim, this game is the best in it, and you should get it now. Also, mining has changed a little, as you get new tools to do extra types of mining, and purely from gameplay perspective, it's great. Seriously, no more monotone laser penis drawing on the asteroids while being bored out of your mind. In the end, if there was one thing I would say about this year's development result, it would be explorers gotta love it. And I oddly am too, well at least from that angle. The miner in me still wants to hang himself after the 24 hour stream I did, but now he's less depressed. Combat is unchanged, trading is unchanged. This year, well, that despite the bigger changes, still feels quite empty on the other fronts. See, Yamix wanted to see more quality of life improvements. In fact, my perfect year would be just quality of life, maybe some story, and nothing else. But I guess we can all dream, can't we? So, in the end, let me know what you think of this year as it passed for you, and perhaps what you are looking forward to in the next paid expansion season uh, DLC, whatever marketing term they will cook up for the next year. But if I have to judge beyond as it is right now, well, aside from the fact that it's somewhat lackluster in most other fronts, aside from exploration and mining, beyond really is of extremes, either really good, really bad, but not much in between. 